guys? Technical Sneakers here, checking in on our little 3D print operation for today. If you're new to the channel, uninitiated or unfamiliar, I do 3D printing stuff, stuff to fix stuff around the house, exhibition prints, stuff to sell on the internet for money. If you're interested in any of those things and want to follow along in the process, at least the vlog portion of videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel. So what have I got going on today? Always something new, always something fresh and delicious, hot and fresh out of the 3D print kitchen. I think 3D print kitchen's a, a, a already a channel, so I'm not, no, 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 no. no. And anyway, what have I got on the plates? All right, so I go on and on about these hornet nests, but I've been selling just a boatload of them. It's spring here, wasps and hornets make their nests this time of year. How many times have I said this? Don't, don't leave. Uh, printing a lot of hornet nests because I'm selling a lot of hornet nests, selling more crypto stuff. Um, and when I say a lot, it's, you know, re again, relative to how much I normally sell, which really isn't that much. Uh, but, you know, a few hundred dollars a week in sales. So that's cool. Obviously welcome. I don't run Etsy ads or anything like that. I don't really do any advertising. It's just kind of organic whenever it comes up. So, you know, that's certainly welcome. It could, could do more in that aspect. But, uh, you know, I'm not pressing it too much, you know, and if you want to see me press it more and do more with the Etsy ads, the advertising, selling things on the internet, be sure to let me know in the comments if you don't care to see giant dummy 13s and me fixing toilets with 3D print stuff around the house, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know kind of what the split is of my overall audience and what you're really looking for. But insofar as that, we've got some other things. Cobra 1, Cobra 2, Cobra 4 all back in service. They've been dormant. They've been Rip Van Winkle for quite a long time, but we're starting to get heavy handed into our Dummy 13 dog, the life-size dog. And so we got all these leveled. We went through and did like a very light sort of, uh, you know, kind of 5,000 mile service, I guess you could say, to bring them up to operating, to start printing the rest of the skeleton structure. I like to do the plate pulls live. Looks pretty good. Cobras, surprisingly, because, you know, I just assume Cobras are going to be terrible print quality. And then they all seem to just work after sitting a while. I guess they just needed a break, you know, they, they, they're, they're tanned and they're tanned and rested. Over here on Cobra 2, which has in the past been a problem child. Now, I've started adding adhesive to the beds on these. And it seems to be making the difference. I know I wasn't really an adhesive guy. Appreciate all the comments in the last few videos about what adhesive to use. I've been using this stuff from Flash Forge, this uh, liquid stuff. Works pretty good and got, oh, it smells so good. I probably shouldn't, it's probably bad for me to, can I do this on video? Oh, it smells so good. Well, anyway, I was printing, well, I don't know, what's the name again? You might remember when I did the Dummy 13, the human version, I asked my friend Roger at 10 Mile Creations, link to his channels in the description below, to modify the knee sections because these were a big problem in the Dummy 13 and he had deleted off uh, these sections here. And so I just repurposed the ones that he had sent me for that for use in the dog. So I've got a high degree of confidence that that's gonna work out. Lower leg sections here, these I printed with normal style supports. And down here on K4, we have the ankles, which all look good. A little bubbly on the side, TBH. A little bubbly on the side, TBH but perfectly passable. Two wall loops, 15% gyroid, not particularly heavy or strong on this. And you're, all the recommendations for the Dummy 13 say to print it thick, you know, heavy wall loops, heavy infill, pet G, make it really strong. I'm not sure it's really necessary. I guess we'll find out. Another hornet nest going over here and what's on the armstrom, you can't see it. I know, what are you doing? Are you being a tease? Can I say tease? I don't think I can say tease. A print tease, I'm being a print tease. So the Armstorm Giga is printing. I'm not sure if you can hear it. It's by far and away my most ambitious print yet on the Armstorm Giga. There's kind of a little story behind it. And I think I'm just gonna save it for its own dedicated video. You know, maybe I'll give in, I'll probably give in for the sake of more content, but someone had reached out for a custom print and I'm not sure, it, I think it might fall through. Uh, because there was a little, it's, it's expensive. The person wanted to pay $1,000 for a custom print. Uh, and so I was like, yeah, that's great content. And it's basically, I'm doing it, not at cost, but like with the shipping would have been up to $1,000. All said, this probably will cost like a couple hundred dollars for me to produce, um, but it's such a cool print. It's off printables, uh, you know, it's kind of a, it's a licensed model, so I can't really sell it anyway. But when he reached out, I was like, yeah, I'm just printing it for you. Basically it costs like plus like five. I didn't, I didn't, it didn't bother me doing it. It's not something I'm gonna put on Etsy. 
It's going to take probably two weeks worth of print time, I would think at a minimum, uh, to print this thing, doing it multicolor, doing some embellishments on it. I'm really hopeful on it. And I gotta say, I'll give you a quick peek. That's all you get. Uh, it's coming out pretty good. I don't know how I'm gonna avoid talking about it, about it in the vlog. Um, maybe when I start printing some of the more ambiguous parts, uh, then I can do that. But otherwise, the gig is performing great. Shoot more videos in the afternoon when I'm not all bloated from breakfast. Just an absolutely metric ton of stuff going on in the 3D print space uh, with, well, with YouTube and things like that. You guys, if you've been a fan of the channel, you know, on these vlog episodes, I really, really try not to talk about anything that isn't strictly 3D print related or at least kind of leads up to it, you know, provides context. But right now it's kind of getting a little bit overloaded because I've got products coming out of my nose. Uh, Creality Falcon 2, laser unit here, ha doing a content on that. I say have to do a content on that. I am privileged to be doing a content on that. Another unit here uh, and another thing coming in potentially and then something else on top of that. So all that on top of all these 3D print projects, it's kind of adding up a little bit. Plus it's spring. And again, this kind of ties into not three, strictly 3D print related, but I'm trying to <laughs> clinic my yard here and grow some grass. And I had to plant like a hundred junipers yesterday uh, on top of fertilizing and doing all that spring stuff. So there's quite a lot of things going on and juggling all these different projects, but we're hammering it out, getting the things done and also delivering on the 3D print stuff that we've been working on if you've been following the channel. So I appreciate your patience on that because videos are probably a little fewer and far, a little more sparse, but I am committed to delivering the content because I want money. That's exactly why I'm doing it. Let's talk about the depressing stuff. If you've been following the channel, you know I've been beating this ultimate desk hub like a rented mule and it's, it's not working out. I'm getting super ultra discouraged. This is the one piece that I printed out on the Giga. This is perfectly acceptable, but when I'm looking at it, it just doesn't, can I say it just doesn't give, uh, it doesn't vibe. I'm not liking its vibe. It's a little too, I like utilitarian stuff, but it's a little too, um, uh, not efficient in my uh, view. And so I set this up and I started using it and I started noticing like the, the little imperfections here and there. And if I'm staring at this for a good portion of the day, it's gonna drive me cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. So I've decided to kind of go back to the drawing. I know, can you believe all the time I spent putting this, designing this thing and talking about it in vlogs and kind of hyping, no, no one's hyped up by this, but you know, I'm kind of hyping up like, yeah, this is gonna be a product. This is my custom design. Uh, for me to just be like pitch this back to the drawing board. I still need a desk hub And so I have put my old fan back in place I put my ultimate pan cup back in place and I'm kind of going back to the drawing board And I thought maybe for the sake of content or something along those lines Maybe I could like throw it to the community Run some kind of contest, you know, like a self-funded contest unless a sponsor wants to kick in the prize for this uh, but like the technicals Technicals Tinkers uh, uh, audience design contest. Design a ultimate desk hub for me. Uh, that's just an idea. Let me know what you think about that in the comments because I'm sure a lot of you guys could design something that works perfectly great in 10 minutes versus you know me taking two weeks to do it. So I went back to the drawing board trying to simplify and really decide like, what do I actually need on my desk? I need a fan, I need a pen cup, and I need the controls for the fan and the USB ports. Do I necessarily need a phone stand? No, because the MagSafe thing just wasn't gonna work. I thought the pop socket MagSafes worked, they don't. And at that point, I don't really need a phone stand because I'm usually up, I usually rarely spend more than 30 minutes sitting before I get ADD brain and run off to do something. So my phone's usually in my pocket anyway. And when I plug it in to offload files, you know, I just lay it on the desk and pull it out. And, you know, it's not necessary. Nece I didn't really need a phone stand. So back to the drawing board on that. Not even sure if I'm going to, I will catalog this, my progress on it. But that's what I'm doing here. And I thought, well, maybe the audience will be like, hey, I need a 120 millimeter fan. I need a 35 millimeter hole here. I need a 27 here with screws and a pan cup. Can someone stamp something out? First prize is 10 spools of film, not 10 spools, that's too much. Uh, but something along those lines. Again, let me know what you think in the comments. Oh yeah, our gate, oh, yeah, our gate sign. If you saw the last episode, we coated one coat in resin and we put it out in the sunshine. Let's go see how it is. You're not gonna be weirded out by me recording video right here, are you? No, no. Wow. All right, so it's been a couple days. This has been uh, clamped to the pergola. Let's take a look. Hasn't been all that hot, still seems 
super duper strong. You know, so encouraging, but again, the drips on there, I don't think they're gonna translate through once it's actually on the gate. Uh, I don't think anyone's gonna really see that. Plus if I add paint to the outside, We'll probably mask it, so I'm thinking maybe we go ahead with that. Again, this was the test piece that had the bad lift off the build plate. I'm gonna throw this back on there. What's the temperature gonna be today? You know, 80 degrees today. So this will be sitting here, clamped up. We'll see if it melts. Can you work faster? <laughs> All right, so time to pull the brim and supports off our dog section here. This uh, should constitute all of the lower section, the legs and uh, so we can stand him up and kind of start to get a picture of what he's gonna look like. Now I could sit here pulling off supports and uh, regaling you, spinning you a yarn of some uh, garbage that I think's important, or we could just do another time lapse. Hey, OD boy, hit him with the time lapse. Once again, for comparison, this is the first one we printed at 300% and this one's at a thousand. So we got all the legs in place, pretty good. I mean, I'm not sure if you're able to tell when I was uh, doing that, it was not, there was no audio, uh, but all the pieces snapped into place real cleanly. And then all the balls connected here, tightened them down. So everything articulates as it should. I studied uh, dog anatomy to kind of be like, well, how, which way does a dog knee go? Uh, so just to make sure that it's, not like a kangaroo or something like that. Uh, but all staying in place, uh, could probably stand to tighten up a few, but overall stands up just fine. So gonna print the rest of the tail, the neck and the head, and then we'll start printing the body panels for the Dummy 13 dog. So really excited to get that completed. So that's what's going on in the world today. So that's what's going on in the 3D print space for today. Let me know what you're working on in the comments below what you think about the Dummy 13. Today's video that went up, uh, uh, like it will be one and a half, two videos ago for you, dear viewer. Uh, some of the people saying like, you know, maybe should have a, taken a different approach on combining those Dummy 13 dog ball and socket joints, um, uh, making some kind of hinge apparatus or something like that. I don't know, man, this seems to work. Uh, the only modification that I would do is probably add a second screw hole in there just for like added tension because the one side kind of remains a little bit open. It works for now. Uh, you know, if I was gonna do a better example or something to sell, I'd certainly put one on the other side. But this seems to work pretty good. So gonna print the rest of those. Le again, let me know what you think about any of this, all of this in the comments below. Be sure to like the video because it's the nice thing to do. And of course, subscribe for more content like this. I'm the Technicals, see you next time.